and I briefed all of the leadership of the plans to get them back into chambers. That would have been call number three with Speaker Pelosi. So you didn't have one call, you didn't have two calls, you had three calls. So Speaker Pelosi's comments that she didn't speak to you are inaccurate. That is correct, sir. Today we're here to discuss the security failures that occurred on January 6, 2021, and how we can prevent these failures from occurring again. I want to dive into the questions, uh, Chief Sun. In your transcribed interview, you mentioned that you met with the House Sergeant in Arms regarding the National Guard prior to January 6th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And who was the House Sergeant in Arms uh, leading up to and on January 6th? Uh, that would be Paul Irving. And the, the House Sergeant in Arms is appointed by who? I was appointed uh, that, at that time by Speaker Pelosi. And in your transcribed interview, you mentioned that when you first brought up the National Guard to the House Sergeant at Arms in the days leading up to January 6, uh, that Mr. Irving said he, quote, didn't like the optics, end quote. Is, is that correct? That, that is correct. He, uh, he referenced being concerned for optics. And on January 6, when you went to Mr. Irving to get his approval to call in the Guard, Mr. Irving said he would, quote, run it up the chain. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. That was a telephone call. I didn't see him in person when I first made that request. The House Sergeant at Arms is considered probably the most senior security official on the House side. Uh, when Mr. Irving says yes to, quote, run it up the chain, end quote, what did that mean? Uh, I took that to mean his leadership chain. And, and who would be his leadership chain? It would if be he's, he's, he's functionally the most senior uh, security official on the House side, correct? That's his, that's his title. That's part of the title, the senior uh, law enforcement official for the House of Representatives. But he would have been referring to the leadership team that goes up to uh, Speaker Pelosi. So the, the political leadership team, meaning, meaning elected officials, not, not another security official. Is that your that, that is correct, sir. He's the top security official for the House. So running up the chain would most likely, in, or in your opinion, is, is through the Speaker's office and possibly to Speaker Pelosi? That would be where it end, yes. Okay, so, so let, let's park that there and then let's jump to a, a second set here. Um, in a press conference on January 7th, Speaker Pelosi called for your resignation on national television. Speaker Pelosi also stated that she had not talked to you since the initial breach of the Capitol. But according to your transcribed interview, you were on the phone with Speaker Pelosi a few times. Uh, can you explain that discrepancy? Yeah, that is, uh, that, that is correct. I, I spoke to Speaker Pelosi um, three times uh, that, that evening. And uh, she went on national TV and said I'd never spoken to her. But I spoke to her three times. Um, the three, uh, three times were the first time when I went over to brief uh, President, uh, Vice President Pence at the secure location. Um, I had called uh, um, House Sergeant Arms Irving, told him I was going over to brief the uh, Vice President. I was also going over to do a personal assessment of the Capitol. At that point, things were getting under control. Uh, went over there, briefed him on when we can get them back into chambers with you know, uh, Mr. Irving being fully aware. Uh, he said he wanted to get Speaker Pelosi on the phone. He made a phone call from his cell phone at approximately 534, uh, where I first briefed Speaker Pelosi. Uh, the second call was when I left that location. As I was walking away, I met up with Mr. Stinger, and we started walking over to the Senate to go brief the Senate. When uh, Jennifer Hemingway, I believe it was Jennifer Hemingway, handed me the cell phone, and it was Emily Barrett's cell phone calling her, and it was Speaker Pelosi on the other line. This is my call, second call with Speaker Pelosi questioning the information I'd given to uh, Vice President Pence about when we can get back into chambers. I assured her that information was correct. I could get them back into chambers by 7, uh, 7 p.m., and the call ended. That was call number two. Call number three was 6.25 p.m. I was over at the Senate uh, from the secure location, I mean, from where the Senate had been sequestered, uh, and on a uh, cell phone using Robert Karam's cell phone, they dialed leadership, who was over off-site at a secure location, and I briefed all of the leadership of the plans to get them back into chambers. That would have been call number three with Speaker Pelosi. So you didn't have one call, you didn't have two calls, you had three calls. So Speaker Pelosi's comments that she didn't speak to you are inaccurate. That is correct, sir. Let me, let me shift gears and go back uh, as it relates to the optics of bringing people up to Capitol Hill and, and running things up the chain of command, ultimately to the Speaker's office. Do you think Speaker Pelosi's office uh, or Speaker Pelosi herself um, politicized Capitol security? Um, I, I, have, I, have no, I have no idea on that, sir. Okay. Uh, any other clarifications you'd like to make as it relates to Speaker Pelosi's comments that you didn't speak to her? Um, I just, you know, wish she had considered that, wish she had considered some of the stuff that I've faced and the efforts I went through uh, to bring in the outside resources uh, on that day before she called for her resignation. Thank you very much uh, for being here. I yield back. Who's that? Some tough guy. 
Who didn't? Who are they talking about? The police. No sense of urgency. Okay. Wow. I don't care what you say. You imagine they should have that much more anticipation about the National Guard. Members want this impeachment. Yes, Drew. I'm uh, going to the opening round. Okay, go ahead. All right, I'm going to put Henry on. Also in the room is Jamie Fleet and Terry and myself. And okay. obviously Henry is going to go through the opening with you, okay? I'm putting okay. on the speaker. Okay. 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 All right, so I'm just going to start reading. Yesterday, the President of the United States incited an armed insurrection against America. The gleeful desecration of the U.S. Capitol, which is the temple of our American democracy, and the violence targeting Congress are horrors that will forever stain our nation's history. In calling for this seditious act, the president has committed an unspeakable assault against our nation and our people. I join the Senate Democratic leader in calling on the vice president to move to remove this president by immediately invoking the 25th Amendment. If the vice president and cabinet do not act, the Congress will impeach the president once more. Justice will be done to those who carried out these acts, which were acts of sedition. To those who strove to deter us from our responsibility, you have failed. This assault did not divert the Congress from our solemn constitutional purpose to validate the overwhelming election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Despite the desecration of our capital, we upheld in front of the country and the world the bedrock principle that the people are sovereign and that they hold the power to choose their leaders through the ballot. And those who fail to present to prevent the assault on our capital must be held to account. That is why I'm calling for the resignation of Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun. We salute all who sacrificed to keep members, staff, and the Capitol Hill community safe. But yesterday was a profound failure. No, wait, wait a minute. Let me just say this. I think our focus has to be on the president. Let's not divert ourselves. We're going to have an after action review. I've never liked Sun. I think he should have been gone a long time ago. Ma'am, the press is very focused on this. Schumer just, Schumer, just, just now a political breaking news alert that Schumer is going to fire the Senate sergeant at arms. I, I, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's immaterial. The heads are rolling, is what we're saying. Well, I, so, I, I I don't want to have it on a par with the insurrection and the impeachment and the rest of that. If they ask, I, I will respond, fine, but I'm not doing it on a par so because pull, it's a diversionary pull, tactic. Understood, okay. understood. So we can pull this card out. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's finish this card. We can pull it out for Q&A. Okay. And then uh, we can't say we will impeach him. We can say we'll call for it. We don't know because we don't have all the blue dogs with us on this subject. Just curious. So uh, let's look at the words. Okay, what else you got? Okay, so just finishing. And I would just say, uh, and to declare every day at the Capitol a national security event. There's no one saying. That's good. What a mess. What a mess. Did you have any confidence in this one? I mean, son, what do you think then? I think that it was the plan that they briefed on with the number of stakeholders that have signed off on it. We had some anxiety just about the presence. Don't you sound bad in before today? Oh, oh, he was not our first choice before today. No, no, no. I, we, we've always been skeptical of Always, always, always been skeptical of son. These terrible relationships with the union. Um, he's particularly been, I think, not great handling the coronavirus pandemic with the workforce. He has done some good things well. He's hired well at the sort of third tier rank. He's done some good on some things on the operational side, but uh, he, he's not a he's not a strong leader. He's not a strong leader. Well, let me say it this way: we can say, why don't we um, uh, salute the whatever, whatever, blah, 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 blah the failure of leadership at the top of the Capitol Police, and that's why I'm calling for the resignation. So let's soften it to the ground, and then do the failure of leadership at the top. That's good. And then... Uh, it's not 
The snake's keeping somebody around who's gonna blow it, right? That, you know. You're gonna have to have well, a transition period anyway, yeah. Derby. You're gonna have to have a transition period. He's already period. going. Hmm? He's already going. Who? Paul Irving. Irving? Yeah, he, we've been holding on his retirement. I understand that, but he wasn't going before the inauguration, is that correct? Only as a favor to us. I don't care. I'm just talking about what exists. Yeah, what is going to stay through uh, February. Mm -hmm. And Joey found a replacement. But was he just incapable? I mean, he's a Secret Service guy. He, he in our conversation with him immediately preceding this meeting, was very transparent about what he thought of the mistakes that he made were, which were underestimating the crowd size and underestimating the president's influence on okay. such a Then I will say that um, further I'm announcing that Paul, or has known Paul Arnold has offered his resignation. He hasn't done that. Hmm? He, hasn't, he hasn't done that, although specifically, We'll get asking to. Yeah, I can ask him here. I'm sorry to cut to the chase. No, I have 15 minutes. Yeah. You want to call him now and ask him to do it? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Sure, okay. Responsibility. 